Hey guys, I'm back again. Episode number 16. So we're getting, uh, things are heating up in Trinity. <laughs> this one's called Dr. Death Takes a Holiday. Um, most of the setup for this one is really like in the opening, um, like pre-credits sequence. So Dr. Crower, your friend of mine, Dr. Crower, he goes to the sheriff's office and he's talking to Ben there and he has the medical records that show that Merlin couldn't have died the way the sheriff said. Uh, ben kind of tries to deflect him a little bit. I kind of got the sense that maybe Ben was trying to just convince him to drop it maybe or like, you know, but the sheriff enters and um, yeah, we learn that he says the doctor is unreliable because of that he may have like some kind of mental uh, break or something because of the uh, previous episode where he uh, was sectioned or whatever for a little bit while he had the um, bleeding illness from the plague. So he's going to use that to get the judge to um, put the doctor away basically so he's out of the way. Um, we learned that the doctor now knows that Ben was there the night Merlin died, and um, then when we were outside, a woman in black points a gun at the sheriff, and yeah, is she gonna kill him? We don't know, because the credits happen. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, the woman outside is Veronica Cartwright, so you might, she was in The Birds, actually. Um, Hitchcock's movie years ago but you might recognize her maybe more from like Witches of Eastwick or Alien but anyway the doctor sees her with the gun and he wrestles it from her and um, yeah she shot the sheriff basically but she did not shoot the deputy <laughs> sorry that wasn't that funny uh, <laughs> so basically there's two threads here in this episode. The first one is the Doctor and Mrs. Smith and the second one is uh, the Sheriff wanting to get rid of the Doctor. So uh, let me see. So Mrs. Smith is who she says she is when she's in the hospital. Uh, the Doctor wants to know why she wants to kill the Sheriff and she says he's not human. Um, we learn that she's terminally ill. She compares the sheriff to Hitler, um, and she claims to be Sheriff Buck's mother. And I was like, oh shit, that's quite a twist. But at the same time, I was like, she doesn't, maybe the actress doesn't seem that much older than Sheriff Buck. So I was kind of like wondering if we were going to get some Sheriff Buck like backstory or what the deal was there. But at home, the doctor talks to Loris, always nice to see her, and he tells her about Mrs. Smith and asks for advice. She gives him this massive, like, tome and is, like, warns him, like, once you kind of, once you know stuff, you can't unknow it, basically. Um, but yeah, he starts reading this occult book at work, which I found kind of funny. I was like, I don't know how I would feel if I went into, like, a doctor's office and he just had, like his grimoire sitting on his desk, but I mean, each to his own, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we, we learned that there's a rumor that the room where Caleb's mother died, where she jumped out the window and killed herself, it's the room where Mrs. Smith in now, and it's meant to be cursed, but she actually finds it comforting. Um, and she, Mrs. Smith like works on the doctor to try and get him to kill the sheriff for her because she can't do it. And, um, yeah, she just kind of keeps pushing that agenda. Um, he, the sheriff, uh, the doctor, sorry, is really in to trying to figure out like if it's real that the sheriff could actually be like supernatural because obviously that seems like unrealistic to him. So most of the episode he's kind of struggling and stuff like that. But later the sheriff goes to see this woman who's in hospital and he calls her Angela so we kind of immediately know like okay she's not his mother um so she says something that is like she has aged and he hasn't and so that's why she could pass like she thought it would be more convincing if 
she was like his mother instead of like a jilted woman wanting revenge for him leaving her. Um, but she, he basically convinces her to jump out the window, which is the window that Caleb's mom jumped out of. And um, yeah, it's right when the doctor is walking below. So this woman lands basically right next to him and he looks up and sees the sheriff in the window. Ooh. But the sheriff isn't worried because he has a plan. So basically his plot here is um, there's a judge that needs money. His wife has a gambling problem. And uh, the sheriff goes to him and says that he has concerns about the doctor's mental health. And um, the judge kind of resists at first because he's like, you can't just get rid of anybody that opposes you. That's what they do, you know, in countries with dictators or whatever. I think he has Russia as the example. And the sheriff offers money because he knows that the judge needs it, but he doesn't want to be dishonest. So later he tricks the judge's wife into gambling away all their money and uh, there's this lovely like salty like older lady running the poker game <laughs> she's like i love her she's like tough as an old boot but she's got this like kind of pastel shirt that a grandmother would wear i don't know i just thought she was funny but um yeah basically charlotte loses everything she goes home she slits her wrists it's pretty kind of gruesome um well yeah, no, it is kind of, there's a lot of blood everywhere. <laughs> she does actually survive, but we know that that was the sheriff saying, you know, do what I want or something really bad is going to happen. Um, well, I guess something bad already happened, but um, it could always get worse, basically. Uh, so the judge draws up the paper and tries to get the sheriff to sign them, but he refuses and makes the judge do it. So I guess that kind of means there's no paper trail back to him. Um, when Ben enters the doctor's room to serve the papers, it's like full of weird stuff. Like the walls are plastered with like pictures and like all this weird stuff. So they realize he's going to go and try and shoot Lucas. And when he does, the sheriff's office is full of kids getting a flu shot. Um, but the doctor goes in anyway and he points his gun. Gail tries to talk him down. Caleb sees the whole thing because Caleb always sees everything. <laughs> This poor traumatized child and yeah they uh, arrest the doctor before he can shoot the sheriff but um, the expectation is that Ben is going to shoot the doctor on the way to having him sectioned into the asylum but he actually doesn't he pulls a car over and says like I'll just let you go if you just go back to um, uh, wherever he came from I can't remember what city he's meant to have worked in before this one but the doctor's like no because I came here to like do the right thing and he can't just like run away so he gets put in the asylum and um, the sheriff comes by to say hello to him there and he's like I'll miss you I guess because he's a worthy opponent or whatever and I was like yeah I'm gonna miss this guy too like I really like this actor and I like his character and I like his kind of I don't know, he's like kind of kind, melancholy, you know, he's a good fit for the show and I think he's a good actor, so hopefully he will be in some of the later episodes. I don't want to look ahead on IMDb and have any spoilers for myself, so yeah, but he's out of the way. But um, the other doctor, Dr. Peel from the CDC, he is still here, so there's a little bit with him and Selena. Um, it's quite short, but um, he goes into class and talks about doing flu shots and Selena's like really flirtatious with him. Um, she's her usual kind of Selena self. <laughs> I think she's really neat. She's very like Jessica Rabbit and he's like, hey, you know, I don't like games. I don't like like drama and wordplay. I just, you know, want to take things slowly. And I think that's kind of nice. I think that's kind of something that seems to maybe get through to her that he's actually interested in her as a person or something so she's intrigued um he's a little bit concerned about her involvement with lucas because they don't like each other and um lucas tries to tell selena that peel has been like sharing locker room kind of gossip about her um i don't think she really believes it but there's a short later scene where uh, Peel confronts the sheriff about it and the sheriff 
kind of says a bunch of crap about Selena, and she overhears, and she chooses Peel over him. So that's kind of nice. A little bit of um, romantic drama there, I guess. Um, and I guess all is not well between Selena and the Sheriff. I think she feels like, out of everyone, this guy is the most likely to actually be able to stand up to the Sheriff and isn't afraid of him and isn't going to take some deal with him or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much this episode. Um, there's an earlier episode, like right near the start, where the sheriff kind of calls Dr. Matt Crower, calls him Dr. Death, because he used to drink and he's kind of implying, you know, making implications. So I guess Dr. Death takes a holiday as um, Dr. Matt gets put away. So yeah, plot is thickening, guys. Um, yeah, so we're getting closer to the end. I'm kind of hoping that some of these, like, you know when a TV show only has one season, there's always like these threads that don't get tied up or um, sometimes it ends on like a cliffhanger or something. So I'm a little bit I'm, like apprehensive maybe that it's just going to like end episode 22 and, you know, with no nothing being resolved. I don't know. I think that would kind of bother me a little bit. Um, because I like neatness and stuff. Um, but yeah, on to the next episode.